We're gonna work on recall. This is a little Tyler. She does not know recall, but I don't want her bolting through. Uh-uh. I don't want her bolting through my door. So remember, every single walk is the same. Uh-uh. No. Come here. <laughs> right here. I'm just gonna slow her down, get her realigned. She also doesn't know what the camera situation is, so she's a little tripped out by it. But we're not bolting, so that's okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Now we just gotta build confidence. You got it. Oh, that's a good job. That's a good job. Remember with dogs like this, you guys, your dog's scared or nervous with, about something and you know, you know that, I know the camera guy's not gonna do anything. I know the camera's not gonna eat her. You have to work your dog through that. If she starts pulling and freaking out at the end of this leash and doing all that alligator roll stuff, sorry, I forgot I was gonna go into the sun. If she starts doing all of that, I'm not gonna say, oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, let me put, let's put you away. Let's go back, it's too, no, hell no. Work her through it, it's not a big deal. If she has a problem with it, I'm gonna talk in that baby voice, say, it's okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Good girl. And I'm gonna reassure her that I will do it first. Remember when it comes to your dog, if they're tripped out, they don't wanna go upstairs, they don't wanna meet the new person. Like even right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk up to Adam. Adam, I'm gonna pull your camera back just a little bit. And I'm gonna show her, look, Adam's not a bad guy. Look, oh, that's a nice job. Look, good girl. I don't want her jumping, but that's a good job. I'm gonna do it for first, or I'm going to do it with you. Always, always, always the rule. Don't throw your dog in the pool. You get in the pool and then coax your dog in with a leash. Okay, what were we doing today? Uh, recall. Okay, so the little Tyler doesn't know recall. We'll go out here and maybe, like if we stay right here, do you think the lighting will be okay in this shade? Like kind of adjust to this. So, <laughs> are you excited now? Are you excited for your close up? So she knows the very, very basics of leash foundation. All of the stuff that I'm doing with her is in the leash foundation course. I'll link the description at the, bit, at the end. So she knows the very, very basics, but she knows leash pressure and she knows how to walk at heel for the most part and she's learning her sit. She just learned down yesterday. So she's really starting to come around to it. So I wanna start throwing in. Morning. I wanna start throwing in her recall because she doesn't really know her name that well and I'd like for her to learn it. So all I'm gonna do is create distance between the two of us. So like right now, she doesn't know her name and I've got high value food in my pocket. I've got chicken, rotisserie chicken that she doesn't typically get with every single meal. And side note, if your dog does get rotisserie chicken with every single meal, and you're like, they're not really that thrilled about it because they always get whatever they want, withhold a meal. You're not gonna starve your dog to death, but they'll be hungry by the time that you get ready to do this. So withhold their breakfast and start their training in the evening, and then they'll be hungry. So all I'm gonna do is create distance. She's fixated on something else. She's focused on Adam. I'm gonna take a couple steps, steps back. I'm gonna say, Tyler, bump that leash. Yay, good girl. And give her a little piece of food. If you're trying this and your dog's too, too focused on everything else and they're not taking the food at all, it's, they're overstimulated. Don't, don't do it out here. Go back in your house. Go in your backyard, go in your kitchen. Go somewhere where that there's all normal smells. It's all stuff that they've already been around. You don't, want, you don't want them so distracted that they don't even care about the food that you have. Good girl. Good girl. Good job. So I'm going to start with her name. I always add a command for my dogs, but I'm not going to start with the command. I just, I'm trying to get her to learn her name. So let me get me some more space over here. All I'm going to do is walk, wait for this car to go by. Tyler, yay, good girl. When she gets to me, I'm gonna reward her with the food. So you wanna make it fun, you wanna make it engaging, you want your dog to want to do this with you. Think about that, whoops, there's a car behind me. If your dog's not paying attention, if your dog's not really into it, well, you're probably not that interesting to your dog. You gotta be interesting to your dog. I'm just using a basic six foot leash. This is all I'm doing. This is how I teach the advanced off leash recall. This is how I get dogs that have put people in hospitals and have killed other dogs 
to be able to be off leash. Tyler, yay! Good girl! Good job! When you turn it into a game, your dog is going to be thrilled to do it. One other little piece of information. If your dog ever gets away from you, and you're like, oh, oh my God, how did that happen? And you totally panic. Get low to the ground, smack your, your knees or even the ground and say, come on, let's go, let's go, Kimlin, Kimlin, and turn it into a game and run the other way. Don't chase your dog, run the other, other way. Twice last Twice last month, I had someone come over and two separate people, one was my dad actually, and leave uh, this gate, this side gate open. And I had Billy, my big pit bull, that pff, I did not want him getting out. And I uh, left the gate open and Billy got out. But I have worked extremely hard with Billy's recall. <laughs> and so when he got out, I came through the gate and I hollered his name, Billy! And I got down like this and I took off and ran back in the house and turned it into a big game. He just chased me. And when he got to me, I praised the bananas out of him because he didn't do anything wrong. He walked out of the gate that was left open. If his recall was so solidified or if his obedience was such that he wasn't going to go out the gate, then he wouldn't have done it. Everything is always your fault. It's my fault. My fault that whoever left the gate open left it open. Good girl. My fault that he went through the gate. So I'm not going to punish him. I'm not going to punish him for, for doing something that was my fault. And plus, doing a recall, that's the other, that's the other big thing. It's real, real touchy. If you, you correct a dog for coming back to you, ooh, that's probably the last time they're going to come back to you. You may have just ruined that recall. You're going to have to rebuild it. Okay, I'm going to create some distance. Tyler! Yay, Tyler! Good girl! Good girl. Okay, so we'll fast forward this and pretend like that we've done this a bazillion times. We haven't, but we'll pretend like we did. This fancy little setup over here is how I really get into it. This contraption is from, oh shit, who's it from? Hold on a second, let me think. Uh, Ray Allen. This little holster is from rayallen.com. This heavy duty piece of Velcro is from Joanne Fabrics. So I will tell you once these cars go by that this little holster, the belt's from Ray Allen as well. This little holster is pretty chintzy. It's uh, not very well made and I was super thrilled when I bought it and I put the, this thing in it and it just like flopped. It just doesn't hold very well. So I reinforced it with this piece of Velcro, which I'm not complaining because there's nothing else out there on the market like it. So it works for what I need it to. Ray Allen do what you will with that or if somebody else wants to do a better job at making this so but here's the point to doing this now no one likes using a fucking long line you know how how tangly and how frustrating long lines are they're probably the worst so now i'm just going to clip this on her regular flat buckle collar that i know she's not going to slip out of be mindful of that and i'm going to walk around and let her get distracted now keep in mind you want to do this after you've done a bunch of the Tyler, yay, Tyler, yay. You know, you want to do, you're not going to do this all in the same day, but for the sake of time, good girl, we're going to do it all in the same day. So this is a way to give her a little bit of off-leash freedom and let her explore. These people know I'm filming. Let's go over here in the front yard area. And then in the middle of her kind of doing her own thing, I'm gonna recall her back to me and then I'm gonna let her go again. I don't want her to think the fun's over. I don't want her to just come back to me and be like, oh damn, every time she calls my name we have to leave or I go in the crate. I'm gonna recall her back to me and then release her again and let her go sniff or be a dog or do whatever she wants to do. But I gotta create that space. Tyler, yay, Tyler, good girl. So the piece to this puzzle, if you've done this work with your short leash 
over and over and over and the dog knows what Tyler means. The dog knows what your recall means and they've done it repeatedly. And then you go to put this on them and now all of a sudden they have more freedom and you're calling their name or you're calling their recall and they're not coming back to you. That's where you give a little bump. You want to get their attention. You want to give them that little bit of feedback back that says, uh, uh, I said, come back to me. So that's where that is, that warrants that little pop on that leash. If your dog really blows you off, this is, this is advanced. This is something that you earn. If your dog is not coming back to you, even with that little pop, you go back to this and you go back to basics. Don't keep using this because you think that they need to be off leash and they need to do all this stuff. You only go off leash when you've earned it. Same with everything else. It's all an earned privilege and that's not a negative for dogs. I know a lot of people think it's not fair and it's a negative, but you know, think about being in a foreign country and you don't speak the language. You would rather have someone tell you what's expected versus just trying to figure it out on your own and getting in trouble or going to jail. Let's see if I can create a little more distance. Tyler, little bump. Yay, Tyler, good girl. There's lots of smells out here. Good girl. Okay, so I'm gonna fast forward this and we're gonna go get the Akita and I'm gonna show you how I went from this to having her all the way off leash and what that looks like. Okay, okay, so this is the advanced, advanced, advanced recall. So what I did with little Tyler in the beginning, I did with Kuma in the beginning. And then we did a ton of this because I was absolutely petrified to let her off leash, not because She's a bad dog. She's, I put a ton of work into it. We've, come on, pronto. We've done a lot of work together, but she has a history of being human aggressive. And, you know, an off-leash dog like this in the wrong situation, how am I going to get her back if I let go of that leash? So we did a shit ton of this, of going down this alley and letting her be a dog and letting her do all the things and practicing recalling her to me every time she came back. I rewarded, high reward, high reward. It was like I threw a party. I had the chicken, I was like, yes, great. Like it was the greatest thing she ever did. Because for me, it was the greatest thing she ever did. All I want is for her to be a dog and be off leash, but I can't allow a dog aggressive, dog selective, a cat chaser, and a dog that doesn't really dig people off leash in the city. It's just not, who's gonna do that? So this was the way that I started it. And now we are to the advanced where I train all my dogs off leash with e-collars. And this is not an e-collar video. And if you're against them, by all means, I don't want you using them. These are not for everybody. And those cheap ones, you might as well throw them in the garbage. I would never put that on my dog. This, her working level on this e-collar has a hundred settings. Her working level is four. I can't feel a four. I can't feel a four on my body. And yes, everything that I've done to the dog, I do to me. So you better believe I know what this feels like. This is only used in, at this point, emergencies or if she gets distracted and I say, let's go and we've got a distance that she's not, you know, maybe she picks up a big cat scent. I might tap, tap, like, hey, I'm talking to you, let's go. This is the equivalent of with my leash. That's all I'm doing. If there's something really, really dramatic happening, like, I don't know, fucking wolf comes charging at us. Yeah, I might dial this up and be like, oh my God, now, we gotta get out of here now. Otherwise, I haven't used the e-collar on her, I don't know, in a very long time. At this point, it's simply, it is just reinforcement. It's just backup. Because remember, you wanna do things that give yourself, that we're gonna walk all the way down, that give yourself the most confidence. I have to be the most confident version of myself when I have, when I'm working any of my dogs, but specifically when I'm working her off leash. If I'm scared or uncertain, somebody's got to be the pack leader. And if she picks up, let's go. If she picks up that I don't really know what the hell I'm doing, she's going to take over. And I have no control over that. So having her e-collar on her, even though I'm most likely not going to use it anytime soon, makes me feel good. I feel warm and fuzzy inside. I feel like nothing, nothing. Hey, let's go, Kuma. Good girl. I feel like good girl. We're always gonna be okay. And, you know, should Armageddon hit and I need to get her attention, 
I've got a way to do that. And that's all it does. So then that puts me in the position of, you know, walking tall, feeling good, talking to her like I'm proud of her, doing all the things that I want to do because I feel confident. And now she feels confident. And now our relationship has gone even further because I get to let her do dog things. And then as she wanders off and does this kind of stuff, in, intermittently, I'll recall her back to, back to me just for a check-in, I'll reward her, and then I'll send her off again. Good girl. Now watch how excited she gets when I hit, the, when I recall her back to me. <clears throat> Come on, pronto. Yay! All right, that was, that was about half level enthusiasm that I thought she was gonna give me. Good girl. Remember, if your dog is not food motivated, you can teach that. I have a video on here. I don't actually remember what it's called, but I'll link it in the description on how to build food drive. Or if you're someone like me that oftentimes gives your dog really good food, you know, like chicken and steak, and you do it for a lot of their meals or you feed them raw food and you want to do this, withhold their food. Withhold it for the morning and do this in the evening or withhold it in the evening and do it the next morning. And that will make the food more valuable. They'll be hungry at that time and you're not starving your dog. Everybody could use a little fasting once in a while, even our dogs. Good girl. You're so good. Hi, buddy. This is my baby. This is my baby. Hi, monkey. <clears throat> Come on, bear. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Good girl. Great job. You want more? Good girl. So for us, we stick to places where there's not a lot of traffic. There's not a lot of other dogs running around. There's not people coming in and out of here. <clears throat> just because, you know, she's still, just because that she is obedient and I've got her trained the way I want, doesn't mean old habits won't show up. You know, I know she doesn't dig other dogs in her area. I know she doesn't like people petting her. So I'm not going to put her in situations where other dogs might come up and try and play with her or other people are going to try and pet her. So we stick to places where, you know, we can find a little isolation. Kuma pronto. Good girl. Yay! Look at that. Great job. Good girl. Okay, let's leash up. Let's leash up because we're coming to the street. All right, so that's it for that's it for her recall. That was not an overnight success. That we worked on that for quite some time. Oh, sorry about the lighting. I'll give it a second. Is it adjusting? Yeah. Okay. We worked on that for quite a while, and this this little flimsy thing right here really really saved me a lot of headache because i can't tell you how much i hate long lines and getting tangled in them okay you guys that's it if you need help if you don't know where to start go to the leashfoundation.com course it's 20 bucks seven videos it's yours forever if this video was helpful for you like it subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when i post new videos or when i post new lives if you have questions you're able to jump in there and remember if you want a better dog learn how to let them go off leash. I'll see you guys in the next video. One thing I forgot to mention in my Kuma video with this, Harry, pronto, good boy, is I've also attached a little short handle leash. This is just in case I really need to get him. It's pretty difficult to grab onto a ribbon like this. And if your dog goes after something, like say he chased a cat, my first knee-jerk reaction isn't to be to come back here and stop it. My first knee-jerk reaction is to grab this. Eventually I'll be like, oh shit, I gotta stop it. And then that way I can get to him. I can grab the little handle of a leash. Oops, the little handle of a leash, get him over here and put my slip back on him and, and go from there. So that little that little easy one, you can just get a regular leash and just cut it in half or cut it, you know, in threes and do something like that if you need.